you have water that starts in Shingle Creek and it grows and it flows and it comes down into Lake Kissimmee and then it continues to build in momentum and comes into this enormous lake in Lake Okeechobee and then it stops. I'm not an engineer, I'm not a scientist, but when you look at how we tried to artificially create something that was never meant to be, you can understand just looking at it how it's not a viable solution. This journey has introduced us to some amazing people. They are just obsessed. They, everything in their lives is focused on uh, these fisheries, these resources, and it just it consumes them. It's contagious, it's inspiring, it gets you fired up to fish, and it gets you fired up to do the work to save these places that, that mean so much. Coming down and being a part of it, you it brings a whole nother meaning. It feels tangible. Um, and you can really start to think about the past and the future. The Everglades is not 20 systems. It's not 30 systems. It's one system. The sooner we get the water flowing south, the way it was intended and did 100 years ago, the sooner all of our estuaries are operating at full capacity again. We get to Orlando, we drive to Shingle Creek, you get out and you get to see where this entire system begins. What's crazy is that one of the most incredible natural ecosystems in our country starts right here. This creek's intended to feed that incredible, incredible vast ecosystem yeah. in so many ways. It's supposed to, but because of man, it's, it's not going all the way there. Well, we're here at Riverwoods Field Lab, which is a, a property right on the Kissimmee River. It's part of the Kissimmee River Restoration Project. One interesting thing about the Kissimmee River Restoration Project is its size. And because of the scope, it's taken over 20 years of physical construction to restore the river. And that construction was completed last year. So the second big component of the project is getting the hydrology right, meaning how the water is fed into the river system out of Lake Kissimmee in the north. So we've seen during this interim phase, a lot of positive responses. When Mike told us about the return of the birds to the river and how fast that happened, it seemed like such a great example of what this work can do. They're not there, and then they're there. What kind of more proof do you need than that? Being from Vermont, that looked like the ocean to me. I had to double check, where are we? Lake Okeechobee is a central feature of the greater Everglades, and as such, it's been referred to as the liquid heart. But really, the water that comes into Lake Okeechobee now has to be managed as to whether it's going to the estuaries, whether it's being fed south, or whether it's staying in the lake, all from an ecological perspective, what's best at that particular time.
you have the 700 square mile Lake Okeechobee and there's a dam around it and what used to be all wetlands is now dry land and it, it, it chokes off all the water that used to flow down to the Everglades and that's the reason why we're having so many issues, especially down in Florida Bay. The EAA Reservoir is critical to all of Everglades restoration because it's the linkage between Lake Okeechobee and the southern part of the Everglades in Florida Bay. When looking at the EAA Reservoir, it is going to provide essential storage that can help take lake water. When the lake is too high, instead of pushing that water out to the estuaries when the estuaries doesn't want it, we can actually store that water in this system and then deliver it to the Everglades in a much more natural fashion when it actually needs the water. This project is enormous. You look at these mountains of limestone and rock. You see the shells, you see the coral, you see traces of, of what this area is meant to be. The insane amount of construction and man hours going into reversing what's been done by the, man already. The amount of time and energy that and needs to go into just making it the way it was in the first place. Yeah. So it's critical that we get that water moving down to Florida Bay, especially in the dry season. And it's projects like the EAA Reservoir and redoing the lake operations plan uh, that will allow that water to flow south all year round. Tamiami Trail is such a tangible, visible example of a barrier that keeps the Everglades from doing what it needs to do. And when you look at those two bridges and you can see that these were two of the first projects, they were two faucets that were basically installed to allow water to start flowing. I think that was probably my fish. Boom! When you're under that bridge, you see it flowing underneath, you can see it hitting the Everglades actually on the other side of the bridge and that's kind of where all the fish are sitting which makes sense because that's where the nutrients are. This foundation project provided the plumbing to get water uh, that originates from the lake through the water conservation areas down into Everglades National Park south of Tamiami Trail so that water could get into Florida Bay. This is just providing the bridges there and allowing that water to flow for the first time in a century freely into the park. So once we get that reservoir, it's really going to increase the habitat. It's gonna improve conditions all the way down to the Florida Bay. The health and functioning of the greater Everglades landscape is essential for us to continue to live in South Florida sustainably. Without the services that are provided by these natural ecosystems, we could not stay here. It is incredible as you find your way coming down closer and closer to the Everglades, everything seems to get bigger and bigger. That's when you really understand the size of this ecosystem that we have a chance to protect. There are a few people that understand a resource like a fishing guide does. They spend every day studying it and trying to understand it and trying to learn how it's all connected. If you love fly fishing, you, you know Florida Bay, and it's, it's a place that you need to visit, you need to experience because of what it's meant to this industry throughout its history. The bay is naturally an estuary, and maintaining that low salinity is critical for the health of the bay, and so we struggle today to keep off hypersalinity as we don't get enough fresh water. Our estimates is that the bay gets a quarter, or would have gotten historically, so we need just a lot more fresh water for the bay to get better. I love to share my stories about Florida Bay and the Everglades. I love to empower people to speak up and stand up, but I don't do it for them. 
I do it because I have three daughters that love this place, that grew up here on my boat. And one day, I'm gonna have a conversation with my grandkids, and it's not gonna be that I didn't speak up enough, loud enough. It's always gonna be that we did everything that we could, and that this place is beautiful and thriving because we fought for it. 30 years ago, we had no idea we were gonna be dealing with the issues we have now. We thought it would be, it was endless. We do not have another 30 years. The good news is we're making progress. We have a sense of urgency in all of our legislative offices. Cultural change within the industry. Industry partners speaking up and using their platforms. Guides taking days off of work to show up in places to speak. Now is the time that we all get together and save it for once and for all. The reason we're seeing progress right now is because there's literally hundreds of thousands of people all across Florida, all across the country that have gotten involved in this issue and made their voice heard. They have stood up when there's issues in Tallahassee or Washington or opportunities to advance Everglades restoration. And it's going to take a lot more of that over the next decade so we can see these projects through to completion. The problem we've experienced in Everglades Restoration for decades is that we've operated independent of each other. Every single community, every, every fishery, are thinking, operating as if their problems were exclusive to themselves. We start making progress when we operate as one. Fixing the plumbing in the Everglades and sending water south is the answer for all of the estuaries, for everyone. In order for us to have clean water in Florida Bay, clean water Clusahatchee and the St. Lucie, we have to send water south from Lake Okeechobee. At its core, fly fishing has always been about connection. Con connection with a place, with a species, with other people, and what so many are doing are creating the biggest collaborative force, the biggest connection of people that live for this, bringing them together so there can be one collective voice that has the impact and the power to make change.